Fuchs here, and we are back with another episode of Robot Daycare. In our last uh, video, we talked about morals a little bit and got some new clothes uh, for Nano. So he looked a little weird with his shades on, but uh, I thought he didn't look that bad. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on and see where else we're going on in our story. I could technically do this forever, but I'm good for now. Nano is all yours. You can stay if you want, I don't mind. You really let me watch you work? You've never allowed that before. Well, we also didn't have a robot child here before. Good point. Is Nano the reason S, L, and O are spending more time together? Yeah, you're really helping us reconnect. It's almost like we're back to how we were when Lily was still with us. Is So Nano is like Lilium? Your personalities are different, but I guess you have the same effect on us. And is that effect good? Absolutely. You mean, I mean, you notice how much better we get along thanks to you. Nano understands. Nano feels happy that he can help. Again, Nano attempts to replicate a smile O has sh showed him earlier, but with the same grimace as a result. Your face is a little less sweet, but the thought that but it's the thought that counts. Anyway. Anyway, check up time. I need to cut your power for that nano. Nano is alright with being turned off. <clears throat> Recalling that his power button is located underneath the shirt, Nano unbuttons the shirt by himself. How thoughtful. The checkup isn't going to take too long. Uh, L kneels down in front of Nano and pushes the power button. Processors whirl only for a second more, then promptly sees their motion as Nano's eyes stop glowing and the little robot blacks out. How are... How come the eyes aren't glowing? Is something wrong? You know I'm not the one who built him, but I'd say Nano is still booting up. There we go. Welcome back, Nano. Hello, L and S. Your software wasn't affected by the incident yesterday, but I did take the time to update your data bank. I also realized that I forgot to include this little thing called the three laws of robotics. Fortunately, they didn't lead to any problems, but you're all set now. Much appreciated. Oh, so that's why Nano didn't hesitate when talking about killing people? He what now? I might have gone a little overboard with my philosophical questioning. Well, Nano won't even think about injuring himself or others. Thank you, L. Very cool. No problem. Gotta do something else or he'll end up lazing around. And we wouldn't want that. Is everyone forgetting how to knock today? Is S going to have a heart attack? <laughs> I sure hope not. I don't feel like performing CPR. You're a loss. More importantly, how did the tests go? Pretty good. It seems Nano has big plans for the future. What about the software checkup? Nano is in perfect shape. What a relief. I was worried. What was O worried about? You, of course. I was afraid that despite the hardware check being flawless, something might have happened to your coding. Nano understands. Nano will try not to cause O, S, and L any concern from now on. I think O will worry no matter what. Is that all you came here for, though? No, I was wondering if you two were up to write the final report now. I sure think we made enough progress for it. The deadline's rather close, too. Nano, we're heading back home. S offers his hand to Nano, gladly squeezes it, back a lot lighter this time. Nano holds his free hands to L, who grasps it as well. The robot then looks at O, lowers his head, and frowns. Nano does not have three hands. It's fine, I'll just open the doors for you. Nano accepts O's offer. True to his word, O opens the door for all others in their path. A real gentleman, huh? For my child and the other two dads, always. 
S sticks his tongue out in his reply, L exhales annoyingly sigh and make their way to the couch. Nano is sitting on L's lap to save space. This is they start jotting down notes for their draft. S. Finally someone who knows how to knock. Wait. Oh, did you two order any food for delivery? I didn't. Don't have a package due to come today either. Me neither. It might be one of our neighbors though. I'll check. S walks over and looks through the peephole. What? What is it, S? You look like you've seen a ghost. Or one of his ex-boyfriends. Uh, I must be pretty tired. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. What's going on? S stumbles backwards as the door swings open. Nano processes L's frozen expression. Uh, Oleander's tight grip at the edge of the table, and finally, a stranger at the door, raising a hand in greeting. Hey guys, long time no see. Oh? S? L? Lilium? Question mark? Uh, did one of you swallow helium? No. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm Lilium. Who are you? What? Hypothesis confirmed. Nano is Nano. Well, it's nice to meet you. Lilium crouches down and extends hand towards the small robot. Nano tentatively shakes it, and the contact throws the others out of their trance. Lily, is that really you? Why well, wouldn't it be? I wouldn't have given you guys a head. I would have given you guys a heads up, but you know I'm not a fan of phone calls. Lilium. Are those happy or sad tears? I. Are you okay, O? Did I come at a bad time? Maybe I should come back again late. Man, what the hell? We thought you were dead. What? Why would I be dead? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one who left the cryptic note and fucked off to God knows where. <laughs> L, calm down. How could I? I'm supposed to be happy that we nearly ruined our friendship for no reason. We blamed each other and ourselves. Do you have any idea how it's been for us, Lilium? After you disappeared, none of us were the same anymore. Do you have any idea what could have happened? What could have happened? L, that's enough. You're not being rational. Shut up, L. I mean, shut up, O. Oh, don't tell me when you're when you were crying a second ago. You're completely missing the point. We all miss the point. Lilium was no is alive. Why on earth would you leave a note like that? L. Is this some sort of sick joke to you? L. Why couldn't you communicate like a normal person? Did we even matter to you? Papa. You matter to me, L. I care about all of you so much. And why did you leave us? L. You made O cry again. It's okay, O. S. It's my fault he feels this way. It's my responsibility. It is not. Hmm? S said that blaming people is less productive than focusing on positives. L said not to dwell on the past. He also said that emotions are not rational. Everyone has been hurt and there were several misunderstandings. 
But in order to be vulnerable enough to be hurt, one must care about must care a considerable amount. L, S, and O, L, Lilium, all four care about each other. Yeah, we cared. We said we didn't understand you, but we tried to. And you just left us without saying anything. You all were trying to do what you thought was best for me, so in return, I did what I thought was best for you. Ghosting all of us to the point we believed you were dead was the best? No, I just didn't want to burden you anymore. So we bothered you so much that you had enough of it and left? S was right. I don't want to have been right about that. You weren't. Please believe me, I never wanted to hurt you. I know it won't change the fact that I left you so suddenly, but... Do you think it would help if I tried to explain? I would like to hear it. I don't know if you're just doing that this for attention, but until you tell me what's wrong, it's going to come across that way. Trust me, I don't know what's going on either. Then how am I supposed to help? I'm really going to call the police at this point. No, no, no. Anything but that. Please don't. But there's nothing I can do to fix this. What do you want me to do? I'll figure something out. Something that's best for all of us? Oh, finally. That took you a while. But I'm glad you're finally coming around. Did you say something? No, I'm heading outside. Just hurry up with your solution. There's really one option, is there? As long as I stay here, we'll keep making each other miserable. Not only are you getting fed up with me, I can also tell you're annoyed with each other. And I hate that. I don't want to ruin things for everyone. Is there anything else I can do? We might be like family, but what I want most right now is my mom's kind words and my dad's comforting hugs. Uh -huh, a bit of a baby, aren't I? But that's nothing new. Maybe this time my cowardice will solve the problem. You guys need a break from me, and I could use a break from everything. Uh, Lily, I'm sorry to bother you, but do you want some cake? Through hell? That's okay. I'll just leave it outside and you can get it when you feel like it. But you better be fast. Elle's coming back from his walk soon. Is he gone? Oh, Lilium, I found a form I'd like you to fill out. This should help us pinpoint your symptoms. Well, are you going to do it? I know you're in there. Alright, slide it under the door. Oh, I, I thought we could do this together. See, so I have two forms. I'd like... And I figured it would be less uncomfortable if you and I... If you, for you, if I filled one out as well. I'm sorry, I can't right now. Very well, do it by yourself, but maybe we'll discuss it together this evening? Maybe. Okay, Elle's coming back. I need to be quick. After sending his mother a text announcing his return home, William scans his room. That's it, I can use the form. William picks up the piece of paper lying on the floor and grabs a pen. How should I start? To my dear friends, it's pretty basic. I don't want them to know I'm not angry. Now for the actual message. I'm sorry that this is all I leave you with, but I can't do this anymore. Well, it sounds a little guilt trippy. I think it should make them feel bad about it. Please don't worry about me. I'm at a much better place now. That's more like it. They know I have a good relationship with my parents. William. I really am a coward, but I can't possibly say goodbye. Hey, you okay in there? I want to apologize for lashing out like that earlier. In a panic, Lilium scrambles around his room and then decides to hide on the balcony. Come on, don't talk now. I didn't mean everything I said. Lilium sighs and closes the glass door behind him. What was my problem? He's actually being nice right now. Lilium overhears the chorus and efforts to enter his room. Why can't I face him? I can't get over my biggest fear. Speaking of fears, Lilium almost looks like he's tempted to jump off the balcony.
It's not that high, right? I can make it. Actually, plans to do it. Right. Sound of his door being kicked open gives him courage he needs, so he jumps. I merely sprained my arm, so the train ride home was no big deal. What the f- You are so unbelievably stupid. I can't argue against that. Don't be mean, L. Do you want to scare him away again? In the end, it really was my fault you left, huh? I pressured you to, quote, find a solution. Yes, but that was a good thing. I don't blame you. I knew you were dealing with depression yourself, so I felt pathetic for not being able to help keep it together like you. You should have worried about yourself, you idiot. Everyone handles things differently. How could I have not worried about you? It seemed like you were more affected by my slump than I was. Your constant bickering made me realize I don't exist in a vacuum and that I need to take action. <clears throat> so what ended up helping you snap out of it? Well, since he left, clearly space was all he needed. That's not true. All three of you were right. I needed space, the support of my loved ones, and a therapist to talk to. Your loved ones, huh? <coughs> of course, you all qualified as one of them. All three of you did. But I didn't want to burden you guys even more. I just, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. I should have been more transparent with you. It's okay, Lily. You don't have to open up if you don't. No, otherwise the same thing is all going to happen all over again. We're here for you, Lillian. It's our job to cheer you up when you're not okay. You don't have to worry about being cool or strong in front of us. We appreciate you just the way you are. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad we could sort this out. I promise it won't happen again. Good. If this happens a second time, I'll make sure that you're dead with my own two hands. Slow down. We shouldn't be happy that we're wrong, that he's alive. Of course, but I've already accepted his death. This just feels too good to be true. But it is true. In retrospect, I don't understand how or why he, we concluded his death so quickly. We didn't even call his parents to ask if they knew something. I guess we were all a little stupid. I won't have it any other way. Our light-hearted chuckles uh, are interrupted by L stomach growling. Then uh, L mentioned food delivery earlier. That sounds like a great idea right now. Are you joking? Delivery isn't enough. This reunion definitely justifies a restaurant visit. Sounds good to me. Only if I pay. After the trouble I've caused, it's the least I can do. No complaints here. Alright, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. Uh, that was interesting. I didn't expect Lilium to come back. Um, I honestly thought he was dead, just like everyone else. But it also does make sense that... They didn't contact his parents to find out what actually happened. And jumping from the balcony was a really, really stupid idea. But anyway, if you uh, like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel to see all the other videos that are coming out for Robot Daycare. And everything else like QV and Mundili. And as always, I hope you all have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.